Got another question on the aromatic chemistry topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay so the first part of the mechanism is the generation of this nitronium ion that's the electrophile that's going to react with the benzene ring. So we take the nitric acid, the sulfuric acid, generate the electrophile and we create this ion here and a water molecule. Next part of the mechanism, we take a pair of electrons from the delocalized ring of pi electrons to the electrophile. Obviously that's forming that bond there. We show the hydrogen now and we've got this partial uh, pi electron cloud with um, a positive charge in the middle. Next thing we do is take a pair of electrons from the CH bond back to reform the delocalized ring of pi electrons, which gives us the organic product and an H plus ion. And the final thing is we've got to get the catalyst back. Sulfuric acid's the catalyst, remember, so that's the H plus ion, this one here, reacts with this HSO4 minus ion to form the acid. Moving on to part B, so I'll start with the percentage yield calculation. So we've got moles of benzoic acid, 4.97 over its MR122. So we've got that many moles of benzoic acid. The moles of product, mass over its MR, 0.029. We should have made, with 100% yield, we should make um, 0.0407 moles of product. So percentage yield wise, it's the moles that we've made, the actual moles, divided by the theoretical moles times 100, 71.3%. Moving on to the purification of the solid. So it's going to be done by recrystallization. So the sort of essentials of that process, we dissolve in a minimum volume of hot solvent, we cool and filter, the impurities remain dissolved. So obviously the solid that we want is kept in the filter paper. We wash that with cold solvent and then we allow the solid to dry. Now I have made a very detailed video on the recrystallization process. If you wanted to watch that, the link's at the top of the screen now. There's a few things you could have said for checking the purity of the solid. I've gone for measurement of melting point. So if you've gone for that one, it's measure the melting point of the purified solid. And if it's pure, it should melt sharply and it should melt at a value close to the data book value. So within one or two degrees. Alternatively, you could go for chromatography. So if you do the chromatography method, you would measure the RF value compare that to a database value and the RF value should match or you could do NMR again compare the spectrum to a database and the spectra should match. Next part the trend in relative ease of nitration so we're using the conditions to determine the trend so obviously phenol is nitrated the most easily because it only needs dilute nitric acid Benzene is the next most easily uh, nitrated because its temperature requirement is a bit lower than benzoic acid. So the explanation for the trend now, so I'm only going to talk about the extremes. So we'll start with phenol. Why is that nitrated most easily? It's because there's a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen of that hydroxyl group. It gets delocalized into the ring. That increases the electron density of the ring. We could say the pi electron density is increased and therefore it will attract or polarize electrophiles more readily. Moving on to the benzoic acid, why is that the least easily nitrated? It's because the COH group is an electron withdrawing group. So the electron density of the ring or the pi electron density is decreased and therefore it's unable to attract or polarize electrophiles readily. Moving on to the flow chart now, we've got a bromination step and a reduction step. So the bromination step is obviously going to substitute a hydrogen here for the bromine. So that's brought about by reacting this nitrobenzene with bromine in the presence of a halogen carrier catalyst. So you can either go for AlBr3 or FeBr3. Obviously it's going to create this intermediate here. And then how do we reduce the nitro group to the amino group? We react it with a mixture of tin and concentrated hydrochloric acid. And for the final part, the students carried out reduction before bromination. So why have they made these two structural isomers of 3-bromophenylamine? It's because the amino group is a 2,4-directing group, whereas the nitro group is a 3-directing group. So the two structural isomers are going to be the 2-bromophenylamine 
and the four bromo phenyl amine.